Rev up your engine! I said the Dodge Caravans are one of the worst fans ever made in the history of mankind. Well, here's one that might make me eat my own words. It looks like crap. The paint's all peeling off of it. It's got 185,000 miles on it and the check engine light's on. And when you check under the hood, the little four-cylinder engine burns about two quarts of oil a week but in spite of all this it's been a decent vehicle for my customer and here's why he bought it years ago for 2500 bucks and he's put 80,000 miles on it since then and hasn't spent that much money on it he did have to spend 500 bucks for a new flex plate on a transmission he went to a very honest mechanic who didn't try to sell him a transmission that he didn't need he just replaced the broken flex plate so how did he get so many miles on this without having to rebuild the transmission well the answer is this little snail paced four cylinder engine. It's only got 150 horsepower to pull this thing around, so it's slow as can be. But in this case, that lack of horsepower was a saving grace. The automatic transmissions in these caravans were horrendous, but most people got the V6 engine, puts out a lot more horsepower, and it burned those transmissions out way too early. This engine is so weak, it doesn't burn the transmissions out the same. As you can see, it's got all the space of a regular caravan, a decent amount of three row seating. You can get a lot of people in here. And if you did fill it up with people that were a bit on the heavy side, you might have to get out and push it up a hill. <laughs> As the old joke goes, why does a Dodge Caravan have three row seating? Well, that's so six of the people can get out and push it to the nearest gas station when it breaks down. But in the case of this Caravan, it's been a very dependable vehicle. 2,500 bucks, he's gotten 88,000 miles out of the thing. Hey, no one can complain at that kind of a deal. Well, the power steering groans a little, a lot of creaks going over bumps but it's still running and shifting gears pretty good. Now the shocks have seen better days. <laughs> you feel the bumps, but this is basically a commuting van to go back and forth to work. And it did have to downshift going uphill, but now we're going downhill and it has much more acceleration downhill. As we go from a standing stop, you can see <laughs> it's straining to make it up this little hill, but it's still going the shifts may be a little bit ragged but it still makes itself down the road and the front end's a little bit worn there's a little bit of shaking here but what the heck it's still a useful commuting vehicle especially since his wife listened to me and they bought a new toyota sienna van for their nice van so they got a junky van and a nice van and there's nothing wrong with having a junk van you worry less about accidents. The insurance is cheap. You can throw all the crud you want and you don't care if you mess up the rugs or the seats. Who cares? You could gut the whole thing and turn it into a weekend camper for the end if you wanted something to use just once in a blue moon. Sure, it's got the fake fancy wheel. Cheap plastic hubcaps over the steel wheels, but who cares? Now, I do feel sorry for the original owner who paid $20,000 and drove it about 100,000 miles. But on the other hand, my customer paid $2,500 and has put 88,000 miles on it and it's still running. To me, hey, that's a decent deal. Lots of space, lots of room for carrying stuff. And this one now has an upgraded Kenwood stereo too, much better than the original. So as you can see, I'm an open-minded guy. Yes, the caravans were truly one of the worst vans ever made. But with a four cylinder instead of the six, yes, they're slow and turdish, but they can go a long time and be very economical work vans. And look, the front cup holders, they still work. Amazing. So now you've discovered even one of the worst vans ever made can be a decent vehicle if you pick the right one and get it cheap enough. Because if you can go 88,000 miles on a vehicle, you bought for 2500 bucks years ago i'd say that's a sweet deal and yeah it might not look like much with this horrendous dodge paint job fading away in the sun but then again 
You're not going to worry about dents and scratches. You're not going to have nightmares about, oh, someone's going to scratch my car. You just won't care with this van. Faded headlights and all. Cause it can still get you and your friends from here to there if you're not in much of a hurry. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, I guess Uber uh, wised up and listened to my advice. <laughs> They're giving up on autonomous driving. They've given up on the dream of autonomous Ubers driving around the country. Now they've invested over a billion dollars into this and they're selling their self-driving unit to a company called Aurora, which does self-driving cars, technology, software. Aurora isn't the company that's going to be making self-driving cars. They just are involved in the software. Everybody wants to get involved in the software, right? Where they can just use their brains. They don't actually have to build anything. <laughs> <laughs> a lot cheaper to do it that way than it's actually manufacture the things. Now Uber lost $303 million between January and September of this year. And you'd think, hey, you know, with people not taking public transportation and stuff, Uber would actually be up. Amazon, they're making a fortune during the pandemic delivering stuff to people, you'd think. But who knows, you know? They're losing so much money, they got to recoup stuff. They've got to become more profitable. So that's why they're getting rid of this autonomous self-driving thing. Like old Scotty said here years ago, don't hold your breath on cars that are driving themselves anytime soon. There's too much liability. You can't mix machines and people driving on the same road. There's all kinds of problems with it. And even Uber's given up on it. If you think you're going to be getting a ride in a self-driving Uber anytime soon, well, go take a nap. And when you wake up, bring yourself back to reality that that's not going to be happening anytime soon. Just like flying cars. <laughs> now here's a sight to behold. Check out this undersea tunnel that's in Denmark. Cuts an hour long trip down to 16 minutes. It's an undersea tunnel that goes between two towns in the Faroe Islands. It's going to open up in this month, but check out this view. It is unbelievable. I'm going to go all the way to Denmark just to see this thing. <laughs> It's quite impressive. Who would think that an undersea tunnel could be beautiful? Well, leave it to the Danes, you know. <laughs> they did a pretty good job on this. Now, it's a 6.8 mile long tunnel. So, if you are afraid of being in caves and being under the ocean, I'd say stay away from this. It doesn't bother me. I think it'd be kind of cool to see. They've been working on it for ages. It's 613 feet below sea level. Well, let's hope it is. <laughs> Kind of looks like you're driving under ice and water all together. They did a nice job in that, I gotta say. Most of the tunnels I've been through are ugly as can be. And the one I went through in Boston, hey, it wasn't built that well. Some of those chunks of tiles fell down and killed a woman years ago in the big dig. So <laughs> let's hope the Danish do a better job making their tunnels than they did in Boston. Now, if you remember that crazy little car, the Yugo, you might not be old enough to run it, but you might watch a little history. They were tiny little cars, the Yugos, and I believe they were like the Yugoslavians bought the molds from Italy from the old style uh, Fiats that they made and then built them and called them Yugos in Yugoslavia. And then after the wars they had there, they bombed the factory and that was it. They never built them back again because they weren't the greatest cars. There's a guy out there that put two Cadillac 500 horsepower V8 engines in a Yugo. One in the front, one in the back. It's four wheel drive because one operates the front wheels, one operates the back, has about a thousand horsepower. Well, guess what? Check this thing out. It's for sale. You know, you want to buy it? Hey, you have a unique car, a Yugo with two Cadillac V8 engines. Now, the guy wants $25,500 for it. He's not giving it away. But it does bypass. The one big complaint about Yugos is that they were so slow, it said, you go faster than the car does. Well, this thing's got a 1,000 horsepower. And it did keep quite a bit. He had to stretch the hood and stuff out to fit V8 engines, of course. But it actually runs. <laughs> And it has an awful lot of power. And strangely enough, because of the old technology, the Yugo actually was a pretty heavy, small, compact car. It had a lot of heavy-duty steel in the frame. So it could actually take all this weight. So if you want to impress your friends and you got $25,500 lying in your pocket burning a hole, you might buy this Yugo that's got two Cadillac V8 engines and puts out about 1,000 horsepower. Certainly would be a sleeper car. Somebody pulled up to a Yugo and you just blew by him. <laughs> I don't know how street legal this thing would be, but kind of interesting that somebody put a thousand horsepowers in a Yugo. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.